All right, so we're going to talk about the modulus or absolute value, and we're going to do some operations with it. So an absolute value is where you care about the magnitude, but you don't care about the sign. So magnitude matters, size doesn't. So an example of this might be the absolute value, and we use two vertical lines to denote absolute value, of x is equal to 5. Now, x could be two things here. Therefore, we can say that x is equal to 5, because the absolute value of 5 is 5, the magnitude of 5 is 5, or negative 5, because the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, the magnitude of 5. Now, it's probably useful to think about this in terms of a number line. So you can see in both, both instances, the distance from 0 is the same. From 0 to 5 is the same as from 0 to negative 5. 5, that's what we mean when we say magnitude matters, but sign doesn't. I don't care what direction it's going in. That's how we're going to deal with absolute value. Now, there is another way to define absolute value, or two other ways to define absolute value. Now, this is a more formal way to talk about it, but I also think it's more confusing. Uh, we say that the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than 0. And we say that it's equal to negative x if x is less than 0. This to me is really confusing, but I'll explain how it works. Um, if x is 5, so if x is greater than 0, then the absolute value of 5, the absolute value of 5 would be 5, would be the positive 5. If uh, x is less than 0, if say this was negative 5 in this case, then the answer would be negative negative 5, which is positive 5. So in both instances with our piecewise function, we end up with a positive value. There is one more way to define the absolute value, and it's here. The absolute value of x is equal to the square root of x squared. And you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, there's going to be like a plus minus out the front. But if we do a square root without a plus minus, it only means take the positive solution. So this works because the absolute value of 5 will be equal to the square root of 5 squared, which is 5. But the absolute value of negative 5 would be equal to the square root of negative 5 squared, which would be equal to negative 5 squared, which is 25. The square root of 25 is also 5. And so we end up with that nice way. Now again, we're just talking about definitions of absolute value, but I hope you've got the point now. Magnitude matters sign doesn't. Let's do some operations. Six examples. The absolute value of 3 times negative 2 is equal to the absolute value of negative 6, and the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. The sign sort of goes away. Uh, the absolute value of negative 3 times the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, the sign goes away, times the absolute value of 2, which is just 2, the answer is 6. Now that's sort of interesting. Let's keep going. The absolute value of negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to the absolute value of whatever negative 4 divided by 2 is, which is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The sign goes away. The absolute value of negative 4 divided by the absolute value of negative of 2 is equal to the absolute value of negative 4, which is just uh, 4, the sign goes away, divided by the absolute value of 2, which is 2. The answer is 2. That's interesting. Uh, the absolute value of negative 6 plus 2 is equal to the absolute value of negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4, which is 4. The sign goes away. And the absolute value of negative 6 plus the absolute value of 2. The absolute value of negative 6 is um, 6. The sign goes away. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. We get an answer of uh, 8. That's probably the most interesting one. Okay, let's sort of recap that. So, properties of modulus, we can take one of the properties directly from here. We can say that the magnitude of, or the modulus of AB is equal to the modulus of A modulus of B. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether we're multiplying them together inside or multiplying them together separately, we'll get the same answer. And we get a similar property here. The absolute value or the modulus of A divided by B is equal to the absolute value of A over the absolute value of B. Now, this one 
is a bit of a, a weird one. So let's take a look at how this works. Now we have the magnitude of A plus B, which is what this question was. And this question is the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B. Now, what can we say about these two? Well, A plus B, the absolute value, is always going to be less than or equal to the magnitude of A plus the magnitude of B. Now, I'm not going to prove that for you, but I think it's a really interesting one for you to play with and make sure that you understand why that's working. A good hint, though, to get you started on sort of exploring this property is to say that the absolute value of A plus B, if A and B are both positive or both negative, is equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And you might want to think about why is it equal only if A and B are both positive or if A and B are both negative. Now that's as far as I want to go with this video. It's important that you take those two properties kind of as one property. It's important that we see this as, as one property here. Uh, we're going to jump into just doing some more examples of solving absolute value functions, and then we'll start looking at some inequalities as well.